There's what it looks like across the United States this afternoon. A bear clinic zone down in the Gulf, covering much of the southeastern U.S. with this cloud field. Meanwhile, in the central U.S., we've got cold air coming in from Canada in Alberta Clipper and a little bit unsettled in the northwestern U.S. and even the Great Basin region. Let's take a look at that surface map. There's the situation this afternoon, 1037, 1038 millibar high, centered over Montreal, bringing a lot of cold air across the northeastern U.S. down into the Appalachian and southeastern U.S. region. Some of the trailing precip behind this cold front, changing over to freezing rain and even snow in far eastern North Carolina and around Norfolk, Virginia. Quite cold in the Great Lakes area, teens and 20s, and a fresh outbreak of cold air coming in from the north. In the southwestern U.S., we have another weather system, and this is a great setup for Santa Ana winds. A strong pressure differential between northern Nevada and the Los Angeles area. So there is the potential for Santa Ana winds especially down in this region right here. Already kicking up some dust out around Barstow, Daggett. However, we have not quite eroded that fog in the Bakersfield area. And there's that forecast from the Weather Service. Gusts up to 50 to 70 miles an hour, possibly up to 80. Coming up to 34 knots at Daggett and 36 knots at China Lake Naval Air Station. And it looks like those winds have already made it to Ontario. 34 knots there. So definitely the mountains are getting those Santa Anas. Checking out the Pacific region. 1036 millibar high, just west of Washington. And meanwhile, we've got the southerly flow opened up into Alaska. Temperatures have moderated quite a bit. 36 at Whitehorse, which is quite warm. And up to the north, there's the old Arctic air making its way a little bit to the west. Temperatures down to minus 20 in that area. And on the other side, some of that Arctic air also flowing into central Canada and the Hudson Bay region, producing blizzard conditions. And you can see some of those gusts back there up to 45 knots in some areas. Lots of 40s. So those are some incredible wind chills. And definitely blowing that fresh snow around. There's a leading edge coming into the Winnipeg area in western Ontario. And that'll be in the Midwest region quite soon. In the Atlantic, cold, outgoing frontal system. And since we're the only channel on YouTube that looks at Greenland... The downslope flow on the west coast has let up a little bit, but very stormy in the northeastern Greenland region, and there is quite a bit of snow coming down right around there. Now I did want to come back to the Great Lakes region and talk about that area a bit. Now we can see that they're coming under southerly flow, the axis of the ridge pretty much down the St. Lawrence River through Lake Erie and down into central Illinois. So west of that line, we've got southerly flow, and on the other side, we've got northerly flow. So there's been a shift around the central Great Lakes sometime overnight. So we go back to yesterday. Here's lower Michigan. We've got Lake Michigan right there, Lake Huron here, and Wisconsin out to the west. What we're seeing here is that they're under northwesterly flow. We've got the cold air mass picking up moisture off Lake Michigan. Temperatures there are in the 30s. So an air mass that is minus 10, minus 20, suddenly being heated up from the bottom up to 20 to 30. So that's going to destabilize it and produce this precip field here and a cascade of snow into western Michigan. So now you're going to see that in animation 
very snowy on Michigan's west coast and some of that snow coming down in the lake itself. But overnight, we get that wind shift as the axis crosses that area. So the axis is about right here. This is about 10 p.m. looking at the infrared channel. You can see that warm Great Lakes temperature, the higher, darker grays showing up. Then we get that wind shift and things start blowing out of the south. Then we go into this morning. Look at how there's this little convergent axis right down the middle of the lake. And not only do we have the convergence axis, we get little vortices traveling up that boundary. Let's get a better look at that. Roll that back and maybe slow that down a bit. There it is. So we've got cold southerly flow coming across the lakes, going right down the Lake Michigan axis. And what's happening is we're getting that convergence of the cold winds into the warm, buoyant air over the lake. And so we get this axis here. And then we get these horizontal vorticity circulations. They divide the boundary into a bunch of waves, and it just kind of travels up along the length. And that's pretty similar to what we see in Denver with land spouts. With the Denver Convergence Zone, it breaks up very similarly and we tend to see that land, land spout activity right at those vortex centers. Anyway, that's about enough for that. But still, New York under northerly flow, you can see that classic lake effect snow affecting Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, all the way back. Another way we can visualize what's happening over the lake is to use mesoscale models. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh, looking at 9 a.m. this morning. We can see that at 700 millibars, 10,000 feet, it was quite cold over the Great Lakes. Minus 19, minus 21, minus 22. So some very cold air in the mid-levels overlying the lake. If we go down to 850, similar situation. Quite cold. Temperatures down around minus 15, minus 12. However, if we go all the way to the surface and look at temperature, it is quite warm on the lakes. See if I can get that cursor to come up. Yeah, there you go. 24, 25. The lake temperatures, I think, are about 35 or so. And you go right off to the shore, minus 5, minus 3, so much colder on either side. 10 degrees in Michigan. So you're going to set up this thermal circulation that flows to the less dense, less buoyant air. You get that convergence in the lake. And, of course, you know the rest. Now, the model can capture that to a certain extent. The dew point, interestingly, does reveal that a little bit. Look at that right there. Some trace of a little circulation along the axis of Lake Michigan. And, of course, another area we have weather going on is the Gulf of Alaska. Very deep southerly flow. Let's look at the atmospheric river. And indeed, we do have a significant plume of moisture coming up towards Yakutat, shifting into the Juneau area. This is tomorrow morning, looking at values of six to 700, so quite some rain potential in southeastern Alaska. Here comes another chunk of moisture going right up into southeastern Alaska, and as you can see, the West Coast and Vancouver not getting very much. So they are getting a break. And looks like high pressure covering that region. Ridge axis located right here. And that means some quiet weather next week out west. We are in a very strong PNA pattern. 
positive PNA. That's a reference to the Pacific North American Index. And that measures the pressure contrast between these two areas. But I also like to consider that as a pressure gradient. And the higher the pressure gradient, the more transport of air and moisture through that gate right there connecting the two. And that's what's going to keep things cold for the eastern U.S. P&A pattern favors a lot of cold air flowing out west. Some of the other features we have this afternoon, we've got strong long wave troughing on the east coast and a couple of waves, one in the Dakotas, one around Georgia, and a cutoff low near Las Vegas. Also a cutoff high. In fact, this is somewhat of a Rex block and blocking patterns can lock up the flow upstream. Over the next week or so, we're going to see not much of a change. The cutoff low out west, that digs in for a couple days and looks like it emerges around Monday. There it is, ejecting eastward and coming out into Texas is a very strong trough. Monday into early Tuesday. And then we're back to the prevailing long wave trough. A couple of jet maxes digging through the flow right there. So a very slight split flow pattern. And looks very stormy upstream. Lots of troughs, closed systems. And we're going to get those one after the other. Just kind of a volley of different waves moving through the flow for the next 7 to 10 days. And there's one large trough coming into the eastern U.S. for late next week. And really not a whole lot of change. The long wave troughs have not moved even in early February. Still pretty much the same strong PNA pattern. So already we're getting a very strong sense of what kind of pattern we're going to be in. This is conducive to prevailing highs coming out of Canada, moving to the east, like you see right there, offshore, and then we get another Alberta clipper coming through. And very likely that's going to be the extent of the pattern. The big wild card is these troughs that carve themselves out, shear out, and produce cutoff lows and other types of systems that can increase the westerly flow coming into the southeastern U.S. and help produce precipitation episodes. But up north, it does look a little bit on the dry side. So going forward, there's our next Alberta Clipper for Sunday. So a quiet weekend except for maybe Chicago. Another Alberta Clipper. Yep. One after the other. And we keep an eye on this area for any precip developing, because usually that's a sign of cyclogenesis. Now, here we have this southern stream system that appeared out of nowhere. See that right there, that little precip area? That's what I was talking about. You've got to keep an eye on that. That's Sunday. That's probably that little upper level trough that we were talking about coming out into Texas, producing an MCS there. A lot of embedded storms, maybe a bit of overrunning. And I would say that's probably a frontal system right there. And that means a chance for severe weather from Houston to New Orleans. Got that strong low-level shear acting on that area. So in some areas, Monday night could be kind of rough. Anyway, once that's out of the picture, looks dry, but there's another system coming down through Idaho and Wyoming. There appears to be some synergy with this other wave down to the south. Looks like they're kind of joining up. New outbreak of cold air right there. Some return flow out to the east. And it looks like that kind of links up into a Gulf of Mexico system late next week. And probably a little nor'easter coming up the coast, but that's really too far away to worry about right now. But it does look like we're going to be re remaining in this pattern. There's another chunk of cold air towards the end of the sequence. So we're definitely not done with winter. And just to put it into perspective, there's the 850 millibar temperature anomaly up at 5,000 feet. 
got to be a little careful with this because when air masses move out of their source region, you tend to see the values increase. It becomes more amplified once they're on the move because, you know, they're moving into new areas where those temperature changes are more significant. So sometimes I like looking at just the 850 millibar temperature. But let's look at this one. There's that new shot of cold air coming south, affecting the Great Lakes by Sunday. That mostly affects the eastern U.S. There's the next round for Tuesday and Wednesday. That cools things down pretty much everywhere east of the Rockies. A warm-up for Canada. Now that's kind of significant. So maybe a little bit of a pause in the cold air for late next week, but looks like some of it develops probably in the western U.S., maybe in this region, the Great Basin. More of a Pacific air mass, I guess you would say. And that's going to spread down into the Gulf. And then we recharge Alberta and Saskatchewan. So back in the icebox for next weekend, the 30th of January, that air mass spreads down across much of the eastern U.S., And I would say by that point, it's a little indeterminate, but that bears watching. Looks cold, at least for a couple more weeks. Not so much for the western U.S. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks to our new supporter, Vando B. Welcome and thank you for the support. We'll be back here on Monday for the supporter edition and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.